Hey, thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions. I missed a couple days over on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I was tangled up in family stuff, and I had to take a break from this, but I'm back, okay? And today is the 26th of December. It's a Monday, 2022. We're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm doing messages through 1 Peter. They come out on Fridays right now, and I those are published in the the paper, the weekend edition of the Porterville Recorder, the local, just the regular newspaper. But First Peter chapter 1, Luke chapter 13, Psalm 37, and Isaiah chapter 30. Let's pray. Father, bless this new week and this new day, and I pray that you'd speak to us. Crawl inside us with the truth we find in your word, and do a work on our heart, and change us with the power of the Holy Spirit by the truth of your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of, of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you have received the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls." Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come searched intently with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was going was uh, pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires which you have lived in ignorance. But just as you were called, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from, the for from our for your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you are, have purified yourself by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. And then Luke chapter 13. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it and did not find any. So he said to the man who had care who had care of the vineyard, 
For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on the fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you're set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue rulers said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it to, out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Sarah has kept, whom Satan, excuse me, has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what, has, from what bound her? When he said this, all the opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. When Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man planted, which a, which a man took and planted in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched in its branches. Again, he said, "What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked through all the dough." Then Jesus went through the towns and the villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. When someone asked him. Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know who, who I don't know you or where you're from, where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will, re he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast of the kingdom of God. Indeed, there will be those who are least who will be first, and the first will be last. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I'll reach my goal. In any case, I must keep do going today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather my, your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then, Psalm chapter 37. Another great, great Psalm of David. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Whoa, there's a mouthful. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him and he will do this. He will make your, he will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from your wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. In a, a little while, a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great patience. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow and bring down the poor and the needy to slay those whose ways are upright, but, the, but their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little 
than the righteous have than better the little that the righteous have than great wealth of many wicked. Boy, isn't that the truth? For the power of the wicked will be broken and the Lord upholds the righteous. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord and will inherit and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty, but the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the field and will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land and those he curses will be cut off. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I'm old. Well, that sounds familiar to me, <laughs> you know. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely and their children will be blessed. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. He'll be protected. For, they will be protected forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks what is just. The law of, the, of God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives. What the Lord, but the Lord will not leave them in the, in in their power, and will and will let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep His ways. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil, but he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord for his stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they are a refuge because they take refuge in him. And then Isaiah chapter 30, 30th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, uh, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, who look for help, in Pharaoh's protection to Egypt's shade of refuge. But Pharaoh's protection will not will be to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. Though though they have officials in zone, their their envoys have arrived at Haines. Everyone will be put to shame because of a people a people useless to them who bring neither help nor advantage, but only shame and disgrace. An oracle concerning the animals of the Negev through a, through a land of hardship and distress, of lions and lionesses, of adders and darting snakes, the envoys carry their riches on donkeys' backs, their treasures on the humps of camels to the unprofitable nation, to Egypt, whose help is utterly useless. Therefore, I call her Rahab the do-nothing. Go now, write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll, for that day has come that it may not may be an everlasting witness. These are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, see no more visions. And to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy illusions. Leave this way. Get off this path and stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Because you have projected this message, relied on oppression, and depended on deceit, this sin will, will become for you like a high wall, cracked and bulging, that collapses suddenly in an instant and will break in pieces like pottery, shattered so mercilessly, that among its pieces not a fragment will be found, not a fragment will be found for taking coals from, from a hearth or scooping water out of a cistern. This is the Sovereign Lord, the, one, the Holy One of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. In repentance, and, in repentance and rest in your salvation, in quietness and trust is your strength. But you should have none of it. But you say, no, we will flee on horses. Therefore, you will flee. 
You said we will ride off on swift horses, therefore your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one, or at the threat of five, they will, they will all flee away, till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord belongs to, to yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show your compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait on him. O people of Zion, you live in Jerusalem. You will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. Will your own With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is, this is the way, walk in it. Then you will defile your idols and overland with silver and images covered with gold, and they will know they will throw them away like a minstrel cloth and say to them, away with you. And he also he will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground and food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. The oxen and donkeys will work the soil with, with and, will, and will eat fodder and mash spread out with fork and shovel. In that day of great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain and every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun and the sunlight will be seven times brighter like the light of the full days when the Lord binds up the bruises of the people and heals the wounds of the afflicted. See, the name of the Lord comes from, from afar with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieves in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the people a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing, as on the night you celebrate a holy festival, your hearts will rejoice, as when people go up with flutes to the mountain of the Lord, the rock of Israel. The Lord will cause men to hear his majestic voice, and he will make them see his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire, with cloudburst and thunderstorm and hail. The voice of the Lord will shatter Assyria, and his scepter will will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on them will be will, with his punishing rod will be to the music of tambourines and harps as he fights them in battle but with the blows of his army. Uh, Topheth has long been prepared. It has been made holy. It has been made ready for the king. Its fire pit has been made deep and wide with an, an abundance of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord like a stream of burning sulfur sets it ablaze. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us in your word today. Uh, bless and uh, write your law anew on our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us fresh and new, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you and have a great day.